Carl Sagan, uh, one of my favorite authors. I just finished the book Billions and Billions, Thoughts on Life and Death at the Brink of the Millennium. It's a tremendous book. I highly recommend it. Very, very interesting about our universe and planets and life and death. Very interesting. Uh, another book I just finished by Carl Sagan, Pale Blue Dot. That's, that is how our Earth is seen from the space as a pale blue dot. And you must know Carl Sagan from the movie Contact. He's the author of Contact. I first discovered him by watching on TV. Hulu called Cosmos. It was narrated by Carl Sagan, and I just fell in love with him. And let me tell you a little bit about the author. Carl Sagan was the David Duncan Professor of Astronomy and Space Sciences and Director of Laboratory for Planetary Studies at Cornell University. He played a leading role in the American space program since its inception. He was a consultant and advisor to NASA since the 1950s, briefed the Apollo astronauts before their flights to the moon, and was the experiment Viking Voyager and Galileo expeditions to the planets. Um, he is amazing. Um, Carl Sagan, I highly recommend his books. And I just wanted to share something from, with you from his book, Pale Blue Dot. As you know, um, we are the first species that on Earth that can destroy ourselves. We have weapons of mass destructions. So we could, we could possibly destroy ourselves within the next 40 years, or we can live for many millions or billions of years and evolve into different humans. Um, well, even if we stay on Earth, uh, we are not safe. As you know, um, sun eventually will die and swallow the Earth. And um, we, we should move from the Earth possibly to Mars. But even when the sun will die, we have to move to other planets with other stars. And eventually even that's not safe because there, those stars die too. And um, then we have to move to other galaxies if we were to survive. Um, obviously, it's, we're not going to be the same humans as we are now. It is, we're going to be different species. Um, but even galaxies die. And I would like to read you something. On immense time scales, in hundreds of millions to billions of years, the centers of galaxies explode. We see scattered across deep space galaxies with active nuclei. Quasars, galaxies distorted by collisions, their spiral arms disrupted, star systems blasted with radiation and gobbled up by black holes. And we gather that on such time scales, even interstellar space, even galaxies may not be safe. So eventually, where do we go? Um, we have to switch to other galaxies. But even our universe is not safe. You know, it's it's gonna it's also gonna one day end. Um, so. I would like to read you a little bit more. Um, perhaps some scientists have imagined we will one day create new forms of life, like minds, colonize stars, reconfigure galaxies, or prevent in a nearby volume of space the expansion of the universe. In a 1993 article in the journal Nuclear Physics, the physicist Andre Linde conceivably in a playful mood suggests that laboratory experiments to create a separate, closed-off, expanding universes might ultimately be possible. However, he writes to me, I myself do not know whether this suggestion is simply a joke or something else. And here's a question, guys, for you. If you, if you had a choice to live forever, would you choose to live forever or would you be okay with, with dying, even if there was no heaven? And um, another question from Carl Sagan's book, but on a time scale for populating our galaxy, if not long before, we must ask, how immutable is this longing for safety that drives us outward? Will we one day feel content with the time our species has had and our successes and willingly exit the cosmic stage? That's a very deep question, and I don't know the answer. I mean, I... I do not want to live forever, but I don't want to die. I wish I could just, um, maybe after my death, I wish I, like my brain could still exist like a computer and I could just see what's happening. Um, so part of me 
you know, I definitely don't want to die um, because death is like what? Be in the ground and let the worms eat you. Um, I mean, what's the alternative to death is life. So I prefer life, um, even though, you know, life is not all great, but I feel like it's better than death. And, but again, if I could just, maybe if after death, if my mind could just be like a computer and just, just watch everything, but I don't have to eat, I don't have to shower, I don't have to maintain my body, but I could just, my brain could just keep working and I could just see what's going on and what we humans achieve and see how everything develops and what happens to the universe. I would prefer that. 